Okay, let's talk about the AccuPlacer and specifically the next generation arithmetic uh, exam. So actually it's not an exam, it's a, an assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you're probably, uh, just to take a guess, uh, going into first year of college and you have to take uh, a particular AccuPlacer um, exam for uh, placement, okay, i.e. where you're going to be placed into in terms of uh, what courses you'll be starting off in college. I will say this right up front, um, you know, studying for the AccuPlacer is definitely not a waste of time uh, because the higher you can place into your school, the more time and money you're going to save. And that's really important. Remember, you're only going to get one shot in terms of placement. So you're not going, it's a win-win situation in terms of studying for the AccuPlacer because one, uh, you're going to get increase your chances of placing into the highest level of your potential, and two, while you're studying, you know, uh, for it, you're you're, you're just going to get yourself more ready to handle, you know, you actually taking the class. Okay, so um, there's a lot of reasons why you really want to take this uh, serious. A little bit about me: um, I'm a math teacher. If you haven't guessed, uh, teach middle school math, high school math, even some college math. So I do a lot with um, uh, a lot of different type of courses to help people out in mathematics. I actually have a specific AccuPlacer Next Generation uh, Arithmetic Test Prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But what I have here uh, in this particular video is just kind of a quick pop quiz to kind of gauge your understanding um, or you can kind of get a sense of your understanding of your math levels right now. Now the AccuPlacer uh, program or test uh, assessments there's all different types. There's advanced algebra and functions, there's the QAS, quantitative reasoning, um, algebra and statistics, and then there's the uh, arithmetic. And of course, uh, this is kind of the more uh, like level one, right? I don't want to say the basic, but that's basically what it is. It's the first level of mathematics, and then you just kind of increase from there. So if you're taking this, maybe you don't have the strongest math background, but what you do need to be really um, focused on is your ability to work with numbers. Okay, do a lot of number computations. So things like the order of operations, working with positive and ne negative numbers, just decimals, fractions um, are going to be really, really important um, uh, for you. So this particular problem, and in general, almost all students or all people hate working with fractions, <laughs> even myself, but you know what? Fractions they're just part of mathematics and you're going to have to be good at uh, working with them. So here I have a particular problem. You can see, let me just read it to you and then let's see if you can do it. So it's uh, 1 plus 2 thirds, all that divided by 1 fourth. So what we call this particular type of problem where you have a fraction inside of a, or a part of a bigger fraction, this is called a complex fraction. But I want to go ahead and see if you can do this problem. I'm going to actually make it a little bit easier for you. I'm going to put parentheses around this. We call that grouping symbols. So I want to go ahead and uh, pause the video and try this. Let me just say one other word of caution. Please don't use your calculator. Don't turn these into decimals and whatnot. Just try to work it out using your knowledge of fractions. So if you want to give it a try before I go through it, might be uh, something that uh, would be good for you. Okay, so let's uh, get into this problem. So this, again, we, uh, we refer to this type of problem as a complex fraction. So what we have up here, if we recall, actually let me just write something simple here, like three-fourths, just so we can get the terminology down. So this top number up here, the top value of the fraction we refer to as the numerator, you probably knew that already, and this bottom number down here is the denominator. Okay, now the numerator in this case, this particular problem is all this stuff. Okay, now of course we have to simplify it to get down to one value. All right, so that'll be like over here, and then obviously we have uh, the denominator being one fourth. Okay, now what we're going to be doing this division sign, this fraction, when we have a, a fraction, we have a numerator over a denominator, this symbol here is equivalent to the division symbol. Okay, So we're going to want to keep that in mind as we work through this particular problem. So just a few uh, things here to kind of get us started. Now let's get to this part of the problem first. right? So we need to simplify the numerator to kind of work this problem down. So we want to be able to 
to add 1 plus 2 thirds. So let's do that over here. 1 plus 2 thirds. Hopefully you have no problem doing this. 1 is the same thing as what? 3 over 3. Okay. Over 2 thirds. Remember when we're adding fractions, when we have the same denominator or common denominators, we just simply add the numerators. So this would be 5 thirds. Okay. So let's scoot this guy over here, give ourselves some more room. Okay, so our numerator here is 5 thirds. Okay, now that's going to be 5 thirds divided by or over 1 fourth. Okay, this is the way we, uh, we would write this, right? So we have 5 thirds divided by or over 1 fourth. Now, again, what we want to keep in mind is that this fraction bar, this fraction bar is equivalent to the division symbol, this division operation, it's the same thing. So let's write this in a little bit easier way to understand what's going on. So this is 5 thirds, okay. Now instead of saying over, we're going to say 5 thirds is being divided by 1 fourth, okay. So you see that that's an equivalent statement and this is going to be much easier to deal with, right. So we have 5 thirds divided by the fraction one fourth. So hopefully you know how to divide fractions and if you don't, well of course we'll review it right now. So what we need to do here is keep this fraction the same, five thirds, okay? And then we're going to flip the fraction to the right of the division symbol, okay? We call that taking a reciprocal, so that's gonna be four over one. And when we do that, the division operation becomes multiplication. So we don't actually divide fractions, what we do is we multiply divisions by we just multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have to flip this guy over, whatever the fraction is to the right of that division. So we flip it upside down and now it becomes a multiplication problem. And multiplication problems and fractions are super easy because <clears throat> all we need to do is multiply the numerators and then we multiply the respective denominators. So that's going to be 5 times 4, which is 20, and 3 times 1 is 3. And then we take a look at our final answer and we see we can reduce that, simplify it, we can't. Don't turn this into a mixed fraction. Don't say, okay, I got to take 3 and divide it into 20. That's 6 times. Da, 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 da. Don't do that, okay? A lot of students feel like they have to turn this into a mixed number. Only do that if you're asked to do that, okay? You'll, this is called an improper fraction, okay? And here, just one last quick thing here. So let's take 2 thirds. Let's take uh, 20 over 3. This fraction, well, let's do one more, okay? 2 and 1 half, okay? This fraction here we would refer to as a proper fraction because the denominator, this 3, is bigger than the numerator. So we would refer to this as a proper fraction. This guy right here is an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator, okay? So this is improper, this is proper, and lastly, this is what we call a mixed uh, number, okay? And that's where we go ahead and actually divide the uh, numerator in uh, denominator by the numerator, and then we, we go into, so this is, I'm kind of going off on a lot of different topics here, but uh, um, I want to just kind of focus in on the main point for this particular AccuPlacer. You're going to have to be a real, you know, master of fractions and all the fraction operations and the order of operations, really number operations, and that's what arithmetic is. Okay, so you don't have to study like advanced algebra and things like that. It's good to know that stuff, and you should be, you know, you know, familiar with that, and maybe wanting to study that later on for your for your uh, uh, course. Um, you know, placement, because I'm sure some of that's going to be in it. For this particular AccuPlacer, though, you really want to be strong with number skills. Okay, so let's go and wrap this up. Um, again, if you like my teaching style, a couple of options for you. One, I actually have a great uh, AccuPlacer uh, test prep course for the arithmetic uh, exam. So I'll, again, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. I also have tons and tons of YouTube videos, literally hundreds of them. So I've been on YouTube for many years, very passionate about mathematics. So uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing and checking out. Um, a lot of my videos will definitely can help you prepare for this particular accurate placer. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, just out of curiosity, were you given 
uh, the choice of what acuplacer to take or maybe another type of an assessment um, exam. There's other ones out there. At acuplacer is uh, very, very popular, but there's other ones out there, other math assessments. I guess it uh, all really depends on your school. But um, but anyways, uh, I'd be kind of curious to see what your feedback is. And even on this particular video, it's the way I get better and helps me make uh, better videos for you in the future. But I definitely wish you all the best. Um, again, you know, to stress, you can't lose by studying, really putting a lot of effort into studying for this uh, acuplacer because, it's, again, you want to, you know, place into the highest level of math possible, save time, save money, and worst case, you're going to just going to be better off for whatever particular math course uh, you'll uh, land in. But with that being said, thank you for your time and have a great day.